Let's start with a simple example. You are an average citizen, having a salary and you save some of your income to buy a cool car for yourself. Then the long-awaited moment comes, you buy your dream car with the money you saved. Now your friend whom you trust asks you to lend him your car for a couple of months because he has some business deals to complete in another country and when he returns, you get a portion of the money he makes on those deals. After a year he brings back your car, parks it in front of your house. He tells you, that he made $10,000 on his one year business trip and he then gives you 90 cents. How would that feel? Well, that's really what you can expect from your bank account as well. The reason behind this fact is that in the US the national average interest rate on savings accounts stands at 0.09% annual percentage yield, or APY. That's what traditional, big name banks give you on average for your deposited amount. That basically means your deposit is just sitting there, without working for you and you may as well lose some of your savings if the inflation rate goes up. There are better options for you, so make sure to watch the video till end. Just make sure to subscribe and give it a thumbs up so YouTube shows this to other people as well. Before we get to better options for your savings, you have to understand how banks operate. I will try to explain this as quickly and as simply as possible. Let's say you have 10 grand, so you go to the bank to deposit it into your savings account so you can keep it safe and earn some interest on your money. The bank takes your $10,000 gladly but it doesn't put it in a vault. It will use your 10 grand to make more money for itself. How? That's very easy. The bank will give some of it to someone who borrows money from your bank to buy a new house. Then the bank will give another person a portion of your money to let her buy groceries on her credit card. If she somehow cannot afford to make payments on time, the bank will make around 20% interest on that credit card and it will make another 5% on the first guy's mortgage. That is 25%, or in our case $2,500. But in the end your bank will pay you close to zero in interest on your savings. The reason why this is happening is because interest rates are historically low and these are set by the Federal Reserve, also known as the Fed. Because of the fact, that people are not spending enough, businesses are not doing well and that hurts the bank system as well, the Fed tries to protect the system by lowering interest rates. That means, that the payments on your mortgage, student loans and your car payments decrease. On the other hand, that also means that the interest rate on your savings account decreases, so your bank will pay you less on your savings. Now, if you get 0.09% on average, you may as well lose if inflation goes higher, because the value of money goes down. What was worth 100 grand, will now be worth maybe just 95 grand. Well, that's bad, you might say and you would be right on that point. But there is a better option for you and that is to move your money to an online savings account. The power of working online means they don't have to pay so much rent for example, so they can afford to give you a much better interest rate. According to Investopedia these are the best online banks to consider for your savings account. Some of them will give you a 1.75% or even 1.96% interest rate. They are also FDIC insured banks, which means, that even if they fail, you will get your money back up to $250,000. It is important to consider the fact that while in the last 5 years interest rates went up about 10 times, the interest rates on savings accounts barely moved a bit. The online banks are starting to bring in some change on this matter. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe, 